So I'm on the way home from work today and my wife calls me. She wants to know what my thoughts are on getting more pets. And we already have three dogs. Big dogs. I figured this was going to be a conversation about getting a cat. Which I know has been coming and I've been dreading for a long time. And then she goes on and says, I've been thinking about getting hermit crabs. Hermit crabs? Now all of a sudden cats don't seem like such a bad idea. So I said, why hermit crabs? They don't greet you at the door with their tail wagging to show how excited they are. They don't bark at strangers to keep the house safe. They don't go get the paper. All we're gonna do is be cleaning up their poop and cleaning out the enclosure that they're in. So I said, baby, you know I love you, but this is gonna be a hard no. I don't want hermit crabs. I know you want them, I don't. And the man in the relationship, sometimes the man gotta put his foot down and I'm just saying no, I'm sorry. Not sorry. Now I'd like to introduce you to our three new hermit crabs. So this is going to be a two-part video. Part one is how to make a banger habitat for your crabs or whatever you have at home. Basically avoid the mistakes we made when we made this so you can go straight to this. This can be your first attempt. Part number two of the video is going to be how to make a science lesson out of this using your pet at home, whether it's a hermit crab, dog, cat, horse, or muskrat. Your kids will be able to do this at home, which is good because they're probably quarantined right now. So what do you do when you have a new pet at home? You go to your local pet store and buy some supplies. Full disclosure, these hermit crabs belong to a friend of my wife's and they were going to politely dispose of them. So we said we'd take care of them. So these hermit crabs were obtained in a secondhand kind of way. We don't really condemn or condone the purchasing of pets at large pet stores. We're not going to name any names. Mistake number one, our enclosure was too small. Always buy a bigger one than you think you're going to need. Fixing the first mistake was easy. We went on Craigslist, found a large terrarium, much larger than the one we have, and we paid like half the price. Mistake number two is we did nothing to account for all the moisture and mildew and mold quickly became a problem. Water will leak down but coming down here, filtering down through the soil, and all it does is collect at the bottom, increasing our mildew scum. So to fix that, we created a false bottom. To make your false bottom, you're gonna to need to do a few things. First, grab some PVC pipe, drill a hole in it, then with a fine tooth saw, cut through that hole, and then that's gonna serve as your drain. So glue that to the bottom of your terrarium, and that's step one, just like I did here. Next step is to take some medium sized rocks and build a layer on the bottom of your terrarium. Be careful not to knock over your new drain. After that, you're gonna to wanna to take a fine mesh. We used a weed barrier that you can find at your local home goods store and put that over the drain. And that's gonna make sure that none of the upper layer seeps down into the bottom layer and clogs up your drain. The next and final layer was to add your top layer of soil. We used a combination of eco earth and coconut substrate to create a more natural environment for them. It's easier for them to burrow into and it helps absorb some of their poop. That's a bonus. Now that you have your drain, your rocks, your mesh, your soil layer, now it's time to decorate it how you want to. The bigger tank allows us to be able to put a lot of different things in there. Cool stuff for them to climb, some foliage. We even have some water tanks for them to swim in. You'll see there our white PVC pipe in the front left corner. All I have to do is take the cap off insert a small tubing and using a siphon technique drain the water that is filtered all the way to the bottom. Having a terrarium with a false bottom as you see here makes it so much easier to keep clean and free of mold and mildew. Unlike before, you don't see any water pulling up as you did on the first one. Don't forget your temperature and your humidity probe. You want the humidity to be around 90 and keep it hot in there for them. To make a science lesson out of this, I thought about how I originally didn't want hermit crabs because they were completely different than any other pet I had ever had. And it got me thinking, just like all species and organisms on the planet, hermit crabs are classified into their natural hierarchy. These groupings help make sense of life's diversity. You see, back in the 1700s, a guy named Carl Lin Linea Linus Linnaeus Linnaeus Hey Siri, how do you pronounce Carl 
You know what? His friends called him Carl. He spent his whole life classifying organisms and ultimately created a classification system that, although it's been tweaked here and there through the ages, is still pretty much what we use today. So this is Carl's classification system. Starting at the top, we have the kingdom, the phylum, the class, the order, the family, the genus, and the species. If you want to see how us humans are classified, we are in the animal kingdom under the phylum chordates, the mammals class, the primate order, the hominids family, the homo genius, and the homo sapiens species. An exercise you can do at home is have your kids look up the different subgroups and find out what it means. For example, chordates means you have a backbone. So to tie this all in with your pets at home, you can have your kids go to animaldiversity.org, put in their pet at home or their favorite animal, and with that they'll learn the taxonomy of their pet or their favorite species. I put the link animaldiversity.org in the description down below. So as we said in the other videos, we're a brand new channel. Hit the like and subscribe button, and we'll see you next week.